I'm so excited today. We have Alan Reyes on our show. He's the creator, the artist, the founder of Crypto Cannibals, super talented guy and an amazing success story. Yeah, we are pumped to have Alan with us today. But before we get started, don't forget, we are giving away this sweet gutter mud mug. Uh, we want to support you guys for supporting us. We're going to go ahead and post the link to all of Alan's socials as well as the link to the giveaway in the video description. Make sure you guys check that stuff out. And until then, let's get right into it. Yeah, so uh, what's up, everybody? You know, we're here today with the crypto cannibal himself, the NFT guy. What's going on, Alan? What's going on, boys? Yeah, what's hey, up, up? before we get started, there's some rumors swirling around. We got to address them. I'm pulling on my screen now. Here's the crypto cannibal. Hey, it didn't come from me, but people are saying this was a self portrait. Where'd your inspiration <laughs> come for this guy? No, so, so, um, so when I was younger, my favorite skater was Chris Haslam. I don't know if you guys know Chris Haslam. If you Google Chris Haslam right now, go just Google and you'll see. All right, just, up. Google all right, Chris all right. From the internet. Hey, how do you spell it? Chris, uh, C H R I S H A S L A M, Haslam. Look at what he looks like. There he is. Okay, very nice. So, so he was my favorite skater growing up, and I always thought he looked like a caveman. And so, like, I based my care, dude. I it, so I'm gonna sponsor a pro for my uh, NFT brand, and I'm like, bro, imagine I can sponsor Chris Haslam. Like, that's my dream. Like, to be able to like Chris. And that, um, bro, that would be insane for me, like to have like the guy that inspired me to create what I'm doing, um, like uh, like as a skater to like maybe even ride the board for the team. Like that would fucking, I can't even imagine. But yeah, he's the inspiration for the art. Like he's the one that I got the art inspo from. That's really awesome, man. But uh, I mean, we were all talking before, and it's just like you said, in Web three, it's the land of opportunity, right? Who's to say that? You're not going to connect with this guy. It's like if it were to happen anywhere, it would absolutely happen here. Yeah, no, dude, most definitely. And it's cool because, like, so right now there's not a lot of um, – well, I don't really think I even have competition, at least in the Web3 space, because everybody's doing – and I think that's a cool thing about Web3 is, like, there's projects for everything. Because <laughs> you like skateboarding, there's a project for you. You like weed, there's a project for you. You like, I don't know, tech and innovation, AI – there's one for you. You like staking and video games. Like, it's so like whatever you're into. That's what I love. Like to tell people too that want to get into NFTs. They're like, oh, it's because it's it's for like this. And then like, do you like any sports? They're like, oh, well, I like this. Like, There's an NFT for that. You into any hobbies? Well, I like to draw. Like, you can probably find an NFT for that. Like, there's something for everybody. And I think that's really what makes it like so awesome. Like, there's literally like it's just exclusive little clubs for people that like the same shit you like. Hey, so let me ask you a question. So you've been in this, what'd you say, seven months? Seven months. Eight, uh, September 4th was my first day I started doing NFTs and TikTok. Started so everybody's kind of got their their story, how they got into the NFT space. So how did you get into this? Because I think in seven months, you've come so far from when I first met, first met you uh, at NFT NYC. And I just followed you in... I mean, you've just put, you've, you've done it, you've created it, you, you, you've got some momentum. And I just want to hear your story on how you got into NFTs and what inspired you. Yeah. So like, um, for me, it was really Gary Vee that really inspired me to start that, you know, I've been following personally, I've been following Gary Vee for a couple of years. And I remember seeing a video about him talking about how, you know, if you miss out on NFTs, you're missing out on the next best thing. He even calls it, I saw a video where he was talking about how he says that it's the equivalent to humans discovering fire. And I'm like, yeah, the old statement. Like that is like, that's like the last crazy shit that happened. Like this was like Jesus resurrection or something like that. That's what you're saying. I'm like, what? And so for me, right, I was like really intrigued by that. So I wanted to find out what that was. And so I made a TikTok uh, called Alan NFT guy. Didn't know what I was doing. Um, pretty much just as I learned in the space, as I learned new things, uh, I pretty much just started to create content, started to onboard people. Um, for me, I have a background in graphic design. So while I was onboarding people through my TikTok, I was also kind of like sharing information and then showing them like, hey, look, this is my art. This is how I do it. And so 
uh, by doing that, by doing a bunch of Twitch streams, a bunch of TikTok lives, I'm actually on TikTok live right now, um, you know, building my community and, you know, just constantly, constantly. And, and, and that's a, that's a part that I think a lot of people miss. Like a lot of people tell me like, how did you get, well, I got the lead recently, but I had 29,000 followers and, you know, they asked me like, how did you get to that point? And I'm like 500 TikToks, literally 500 TikToks, probably 40 Twitch streams, probably 50 uh, TikTok streams, probably 40 spaces. And I've responded to 22,000 comments. And now you're like, if so, like literally, like if someone asked me like, how can I do what you did? I'm going to tell them post 500 TikToks, respond to 22,000 comments, go on 50 spaces, do a million lives, and then come talk to me. But most people are just going to see that, oh, he got lucky or he just fucking did this and that. And I think like, and even for me, it was a big eye opener because I used to follow people that were in positions way above me. And I'm always thinking like, what are they doing? And I'm like, motherfucker, they're working. They're literally they're going at this is my third meeting today and i'm like they're they're going there, and i gotta end this one later and i gotta hop in another one and then i gotta go do a live for my community like it's it's fucking it's work it's work it's work and it's crazy because like i feel like a lot of us want the answer right like we want the what's the secret to like you know building a community it's showing up every single day and doing as much as you can for them because that's yeah all you can. absolutely and Along those lines, you know, you mentioned previously that you were a server, right? You worked in industry and kind of the name of the game there is getting people to like you, right? For lack of a better phrase, at its yeah. highest level, the more people like you to some degree, the better your compensation. And so, you know, is there anything from that that you took and brought into Web3 that you feel like it has allowed you to kind of gain an advantage or that you've been able to leverage through building these communities? You know, and and everyone's different. So, like, obviously, the way I promote, the way I talk, it's not going to be the same as somebody else doing it. Um, but, like, for me, honestly, it was being a – I'm very vulnerable. I'm very vulnerable. So, like, for me, like, when, when I first started, when I was making my art, I would tell people, like, dude, I'm fucking, you know, 20, well, 26 now, but I would tell people, like, hey, like, I used to live in a trailer, and I used to do this. And if, if I – at the time when I started NFTs, I literally had negative – Fifty-six dollars in my bank account. I swear to God, like, swear to God. And then so people ask me like, how do you have negative fifty-six bucks, but you're, you know, you got NFTs? And I would literally, like, I would get my Chili's check or whatever. I would pay my bills, and if I had five hundred, eight hundred dollars left, all of it, throw it into NFTs. And so when you do that, you don't have no money in your bank account, and then you get an overdraft fee, and that shit goes negative or whatever. But like um, for me, it was like, I believe it. Like I even had to a point where I wanted to sell my car. I was like, mom, I, I got to sell my car. <laughs> I can like, I obviously don't do that. Like people listening, don't go and sell your car, please. That's stupid. Um, but for me, I could do it because I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. Like I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? And so for me, like it was, it's like, uh, it's a lot of risk. Like I was literally putting all my money, all my money I had into NFTs, all of it that I, after I paid bills. So let me just clarify that for people that don't, you know, don't get evicted and then, you know, go buy an NFT hoping you're going to flip it. Um, so for me, like, that's what I did. I did that for months and um, I pretty much got to the point where NFTs overtook my life so much that I couldn't concentrate at work. I couldn't, I was like, I was like, telling, I told my boss, I was like, dude, I can't be here. I, I can't, like, I'm, my mind is 24 seven. Like all I'm thinking about is NFTs. Like it's literally affecting the way I work. Like I can't work. And so I, I left, I left Chili's and I was like, you know what, just, just go all in on NFTs. And I did. And right now I have like three collections that I've done. I've sold out on two of them. I've done a total of like 60 ETH altogether. And then oh, my yeah. buddy, I just launched my buddies. I helped my buddy is like two weeks ago. He did 40 ETH in three days. And so like, you know, so dope. Like that, you know um, we have a team of people from seven months ago from being like a server at Chili's by myself. Right now I have a team of about like seven, seven people that help me out. Um, we're working on three collections. A lot of people don't even know because like I get hired to do collections too, because people know I'm an artist mm -hmm. and so we'll have people reach out and then they'll ask me to do entire collections. And so like we're doing our collection, we're running all of our merch, like I just got like my cannibal board stuff. Like a lot of them are gonna start nice. to get shipped out. And 
So like we, I really, there's so much opportunity in the Web3 space that people think it's like, it's not just so like, and the thing too is like, I buy, I flip, I fucking sell, I, I create art for people. I'm like, bro, there's endless opportunity here. Like what is going on? And so for me, I try to capitalize on as much as I can, you know, try to like, you know, bring in as much like that I can, you know, give to people. And now, you know, we're, we're getting there. My Genesis collection is at like 32 ETH. I think, and I think we're at point one is my floor price. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, so I want to talk about the first time I met you. So we were in uh, New York and it was funny because we, I don't know, I didn't know what we were doing. We're just standing there and you come up and you're just yeah, like, you're just hey, what's up, man? Like, you guys look cool. What's going on? What are, you, what are we doing? Bro, you guys are like, you guys are dressed like me. I was right, like, right. To them because they're, they're, they look normal. Not to say nobody in NFT and YC look normal. But these guys look like the cool kids, and I was like, I need to go talk to them because they look like I'd hang out with them in Arizona or some shit. Yeah. And it was well, cool. You blew my mind, like, right when I met you because you told me that you had just made $30,000 last month off of selling your NFTs on TikTok. Yeah. And I was just like, what? <laughs> you know? And then you start telling me the story, and it was really inspiring um, because I think that um, – I don't know. Tell me your background. So you said you're a graphics designer, but like, how did that whole process go? Like, where did you start when you said, okay, I'm going to make an NFT. Did you just upload on OpenSea or did you, how did you Yeah. So my, the way I did it is very untraditional. I actually don't think there's, I literally don't think there's like anyone in the space that has done it how I did it. Uh, I so the way I did it was I learned how to, I don't know anything about smart contracts. I don't know that shit. I don't understand solidity. I don't know any of that. I just know how to communicate, talk to people, create art. And so for me, when I started in the space, I was like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, learn as I go and, you know, get more involved. And I learned how to lazy mint. So if you lazy mint, all you got to do is you pay your gas fee on OpenSea and then you just create the art, you upload it, you post it for sale and, you know, people buy. And so for me, um, my Genesis collection is composed of 500 one of one art pieces. And so it's 500 individual art pieces. And then so what I did is I got the funds from that. And I started like my actual project, which is my crypto cannibals. Yeah. And so uh, I'm pulling up on the screen right now, but here are those pieces. You mentioned them to us earlier. And yeah, they are sweet. You, you're totally correct. Uh, not one is like the other. No, dude, it's probably like, the. it's cool. Cause I think this is the largest one of one collection on all OpenSea. I don't hey, believe it. Can you go to his website? I want to go through your socials because, man, in like a real quick time, you've got you got your website, you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter. I mean, you've got the whole suite, and it looks really professional. Um, so you said you have a team of seven. So someone you, you've created this team around you to help you build and scale, and I'm guessing just reinvesting back into what you're doing. Um, but then just recently you were telling me that you got kicked off of TikTok, and I know you had, what, like 30,000 people on TikTok? So yeah, like what happened there and yeah, how did you get kicked off of TikTok? Um, so if you're on uh, everybody in the Web three space on TikTok side has gone banned. So if, I think it's really more like it's yeah. So it's because we're talking crypto and we're talking NFTs and hmm. TikTok don't like that. And it doesn't matter. Like I can post about an NFT or something and like I like hey this NFT went up look at it and then it'll say hey banned for regulations and I don't know like what that's it that's all you did. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, what the fuck am I? And then you got people like some of the videos on TikTok are crazy. And I'm like, bro, what the hell? No, I've seen them. They're Who's whack. It's like banning? like what the fuck? Who's running the fucking band section? I was like, that's uh go down. That's when go down a little bit. That's when I was 18. Awesome you can picture. see a friend holding a cannibal board. They're both holding cannibal boards. That's when I was 18. Oh, that's nice. And so yeah, why, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? You said you know, where does it say maybe it was established Dude, right here? On, it's fucking you just want to see, go on, go on YouTube and look up uh, cannibals, crypto cannibals, or like the cannibal club. I think you should be able to, um, you should be able to find old skate videos of when I was 18. And so I would go film with people. i will make little commercials. I used to do like little contests and shit like that. They're they're whack. Don't get. You're gonna. We're not gonna go see a super production. <laughs> but it's kind of like you know, a little a little uh, history. Hey, let me see if I can. I think yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, just take your. He'll, he'll put on yours. 
Let's see what we got here. I've got. I got our live going. Um, yeah. So else? if you look up, like if you look up Alan Reyes, uh, my name, and then put cannibals on the side of it, you'll got be it. able to find uh, my my old YouTube. Let's see what we got. Oh, there you go. No, nice. let's put, is it coming out for you? Oh, look, click right there that says the the skate competition. Okay, the got it. Yeah. yeah my and computer's then, going a little slow because of, uh, I guess, because we're short. And then go look, at the, go look at the videos. I like, click on my name and see the videos down there so I can show you guys some. Okay. You can see some of the, some of the stuff that we used to do. Okay. Oh, gosh. I don't need to do that. Okay. Oh, nice. Here we go. Like, watch, go down, click videos. I want to show you guys a video, dude. It's fucking funny. Well, I think it's kind of funny. But, look, go to um, Still Struggling, I think is a cool one. I recorded myself, like, skating around the, and that was when I was, like, in the little ghetto. Like, I used to live in the ghetto, and so I was like, fuck it, just fuck your life. And so even since back then, I was, like, the same type of way I promote myself. Oh, there you go, Cannibal Skate Club. Yeah, it's like, and they, look, play the song. Can you play the song? It, it's yeah, 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 I got you. Look, it's the Baby Small song, I think. Oh, hell yeah. This is like a little bit of history into my thing. Back in my house, my brother in the same fucking bed. In the same fucking bed. I knew I was to share a room and everything. And so this was when I was 18. And I was trying to build myself. I was trying to build a brand. And so I think a lot of people miss that too. I'm like, people think that my success is seven months and then a few space. Motherfuckers, I've been doing this for eight years and struggling for eight years. I've been trying to figure out like this shit for eight years. You know what I mean? I to get like the. Is it like the movie? That's cool, man. So you're you uh you live in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. And we were, we were talking before, and you were saying that uh, your whole community, you're like the only one that kind of knows about NFTs. Is kind of how it is with me, you know. I I and, and you know you're talking about how you you're stressing out with your boss. Like, what are you gonna tell him that that you're looking at? Um, elephants online in the metaverse and you know you're having a hard time with yeah, it yeah. you know what i mean like people just look at you crazy Bro, like, you know they used to make fun of me at chili's like they used to make fun of me and so i pulled oh, up in the car. that's when they believed it that's when they believed it. Like, it like once i pulled up in the car they're like oh this motherfucker really and got then you're it. onboarding all of them right now all of a sudden like they're like hey where's my nft and I would tell them, bro, for months, I was like, dude, you guys need it. every day. I was trying to onboard every single person at Chili's. I was like, dude, this is crazy. I just sold. And I remember I remember the, the day, um, I think I sold the 30K. I think it was a big day for me. It was like last year. And I told my boss, and they're like, what? Yeah, they're, they're they're gonna gonna make a year here at Chili's. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck that. What am I doing? You're like, I can fucking do this. And so I like. I just, yeah, I laughed. But you know what, though? That makes you a believer. I think every one of us has had a big come up. And you see other people having this in the space. And you, you kind of question, is it real or not real? But when it happens to you, you're a believer. And and then it sparks a different kind of motivation in you. Um, I, I was wondering, like, so what was your, other than your uh, NFT collection, I mean, uh, uh, the one that you came out with, what was your biggest come up in the NFT space? Um. I think uh, it was when, uh, if it's not my collection and it's just buying, um, I don't know if, uh, are you part of the Smiles Pop? I think you have one, no? I had two. I actually sold them both, which uh, well, <laughs> I made I money mean, on them. I didn't, I didn't sell them over one ETH. I had, I had fucking, I had eight. <laughs> I had eight of those, bro. And then like, I was, I was talking to people for months about them. And you know what? I love that that actually happened to me because I held on to the smiles. Uh, I sold most of them. I only have two. What are you going to do? It went down to point two. You're not going to sell, right? Yeah. And um, fucking, so 
I, I held them for like a long time, bro. Like for a long time, I was buying these and I was telling people, I was like, look, check this product out. It was a thousand dollars at the time, you know, which is still like, it's kind of expensive for a lot of people because that's like rent. Yeah, but for sure. I, was people, I was like, dude, check this project out for months, right? Then all of a sudden they went up to 2.5, bro. They went up to like $8,000 each. I was like, holy fuck. And you had eight of them? Yeah, I had eight of them. I had eight of them. And so that's like 56K. Um, I didn't sell at an all time high. I uh, probably made like 25 off of them. Um, yeah. But I only sold like five of them, which is still good. And um, so for me, it was that. But then I, I, I always tell people like, people think like brand new people that get into the NFT space, they think if their NFT they bought yesterday doesn't flip like three days, bro, the floor drops and people panic. They go crazy. They're like, oh, it's fucking the shittiest project in the world. I'm like, you've never been in the NFT space, huh? And yeah. Like, because like dude literally like if you really and i tell people you have to watch the founders if the founder like you know and i don't like to use myself as an example because i don't want people to be like oh he's pumping his own shit he's shilling his own shit like for me like we're going to la you know we're going to la uh this next week we're gonna go meet with you know dgk uh hopefully we got like our boards coming out uh we're gonna do our demo video in la like I think like when I see other people doing something that I would do, like, oh, this guy's going to NFT NYC and he's a founder of a project. That tells me this motherfucker obviously wants his project to do well. So he's trying to build a network. He's trying to get connections. He's doing shit. And the ones that get rubbed are the people that have no nothing, right? That And so for me, it's like, so when I saw the smiles, I was like, oh, this guy's actually like doing events. He's like, the art's good. He has a community. The roadmap looks lit. And so when people would FOMO out of it, I'm like, are you guys fucking stupid? What are you guys doing? Like, this is, he's obviously going to follow through with it. He's had a past record of doing it. And so for me, it was kind of like a, just hold on to it. And it, you know, funny enough, two months later, it went crazy. And I tell people that's, that. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Like I tell people, like, hey, what was that? Oh, go ahead. No, no I was just, like, I was like, uh, <laughs> No, I was, I was actually, there you go. There you go. I was literally thinking about this exact thing while I was exercising today because I was like, you know, you mentioned earlier when we were talking, you're like, it's it's not e easy, but it's easy. And I was thinking, like, you know, what exactly does that mean? Um, and so my first thought was like, to some degree, all NFTs go up. And I know that's not necessarily true, but what is true is when you invest in this space. As long as you invest in someone who is not a quitter, then to some degree all NFTs go up, right? At some point, it's cyclical, and the you NFT. Gotta get that part of the clip and clip it. That was a clip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, sure. absolutely, bro. And that's why, to me, I always tell people, eighty percent. Obviously, it's not financial advice, but eighty percent of a project's success will always come from the founder and the team. If the founder and the team are not it. Mm, be careful. Be weary. Because again, that's to me is the biggest indicator. So like for me, fuck the art. Gary V's art sucks. Be real, right? Real fuck. Anybody else? And people are like, yeah, but it's Gary V. He draws. It's Gary fucking V. He can draw whatever the fuck he wants, and he can sell right. it out. Anybody else? No, you gotta put out. You gotta put out some good shit. Um, but even then, Gary V shows he got it like that. He shows he's like he's he's also about it. You know what I mean? It's like I think a no brainer for real is a Gary V. Like if you can get a V friend. Hold on to it for the next 10 years because it's probably going to be worth 300 fucking K. Hey, are you going to VCon? Uh, I don't have the ticket, but I'll hey, probably end up doing one. I pulled an Alan Reyes on this one. I don't have a ticket. I already booked my flight. I booked my hotel room. And I'm like, look, I got a month and a half to figure out how to get two tickets. And I'm going to do it. Hell you just yeah, got to put yourself there, man. Shea, dude, people don't know that. I'm, I'm like the king of, uh, I, my brother calls it DODs. Uh, decision of desperation so like for me like i think i went to nft nyc you did like, no that's why i say it dude really noticed. i was like i was literally on the live on uh, my friend where she was like she was going to nft nyc her name is coco and then i was like oh that's cool that you're going she's like oh you should and i was like yeah i should and i fucking got on my computer <laughs> the ticket got a plane i was like all right let's go i'm going and i told my community about it and so for me it's like i'm and i think like i'm scared but I don't care. Like, I'm like, oh, it feels weird. And I might, I might, like, even with my stuff, like, I might fail. Absolutely. There's a hundred, you know, not a hundred percent chance. There's a big chance that I fail at what I do. But for me, it's never been like a, then don't do it. It's like a, well, well, only one way to find out. And so I think of like opportunities like that.
I, I always, I never like let down an opportunity because I always think you can make something out of it. And even if you don't get nothing out of it, there's still something to learn from it where you could use it to better yourself. Right. So let's talk about NFT NYC. So you get there. How was that experience? Did you have a good time? Like, um, it wasn't really what I thought it was. I'm going to just say that part. And I, I don't know, like, um, I don't know what I was expecting, really. I was, it was like, um, so like, I don't know how it was for you. Like, for me, the fun part was like meeting people like you and like other people in the space and stuff like that, really. Um, but it was like a bunch of events everywhere. That's what I didn't really like. I wish it was more of like, I don't know if it's like, kind of like, well, people don't, I know there's like so many things that happen in the space. But I don't like, and that's kind of happening now. And, you know, I don't know if you guys, you know, want to address that. South by Southwest. Like a lot of people, bro, stick to their groups and they don't let nobody in. And I'm like, bro, that's not the NFT space. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, I get it. Like, you want to be part of these exclusive clubs and, like, fuck you, I'm in it. And you're not, like, I'm a board ape. But it's kind of like, that's not the purpose of the Web3 space. I don't know. I just like, for me, that's, that's the only thing I don't really like. Like, I wish they would include people that, don't own their shit too like to somehow like hey we're having a party just come fucking party with us or some shit i don't know but you get what i mean like we're no i get it so i mean some groups are like that some aren't like some of the bigger groups it's almost like you know the cool kids club or something i'm like yeah. Fuck you guys. i don't, I don't even want to own your shit i want to own a project right? that you know people are cool and then we can kick it and hang out like no i definitely yeah. agree I, I used to say that like one of the largest things that maybe not attracted me to the space, but kept me in the space was the amount of positivity that was flowing through it, right? That's the web three ways, just like um, people uplifting people and being great together. And so, yeah, it, I mean, whenever I see it. Right? It's the model, you're all gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Right? Yeah, and, so, okay, so that was last year. I think Wagme was last year. I Like, I, I think it's changed a little bit. So I want to get your take on, I want to get your take on where it's at now. Where do you see the space moving in the next year or two? They're saying it's the year of the cannibal. <laughs> mm-hmm. We got to make something happen. And I, I think that's the thing, too. And like what you said, right, it's like you can always bet on people that don't quit. <laughs> it's like, a, like somehow, one way or another, you – you know, there's a there's a saying, um, you know, you ask enough people to fucking, it's a terrible example, but it's a truth. Like, you ask enough people to eat a fucking shit sandwich, someone's going to do it. Like, someone's going to fucking go do it. And so for me, that's really like, for me, it's like, you just hammer it. You just hammer it. You keep going and you keep going and something's got to give. Something. It's going to be, and even like for me, like, you know, I tell people like, I sold out on my first one and I have another one that sold out. But like on this new one, my crypto account will be two. Um, I think I've only minted like around 700 of them. And I'm like, it's just one, it's just one person away. And bro, you guys know how much money these fucking web three people like some people like I, I had a buddy of mine, he was like, Oh yeah, I'm down 40k. I'm like, bro, what you fucking down 40k? And he's like, Yeah, man, sucks. And he's like, anyways, what are you doing today? I'm like, bro, what the you just lost forty thousand dollars? Like he's like, Yeah, it happened. Like, Better chill. Yeah, and I'm like, bro, like, bro one person can move a whole fucking thing. Literally, like just one connection can change your entire life. And so for me, I I know that opportunity is going to come. And whether it doesn't come, I'll do it myself. I'll fucking one by one, motherfucker. We're going to build this ship. You don't get in the front door. You get in the back door. You don't get in the back door. You get in the side door. Yeah, bro. That's, that's the roof. what i Yeah, you just got to keep fucking hammering it. And I really do think, like, I really do believe life is malleable. Like, it's really, it's, it's really malleable to the point where you're like, you, you can, you can, manipulate it because you're the one that decides what happens you know what i mean like i i, I and i think that's where a lot of people also get the mistake like i can't like uh, i want to manifest telling it like i gotta say this shit and then once i hang up i gotta go make boxes and you know put all my shit together and then do a tiktok and you know get on twitter like you can't just like oh expect well, it to happen have you heard that expression faith without works is dead still gotta do something Absolutely. Right? You know, absolutely. And so I think like that's for me is the biggest thing. And so even like for me, when I look at projects, I'm like, what are they doing? Because if they're building times out of 10 long term, you're going to look at an upwards trend, like what you're saying, especially if the team's like on it. Okay. So, so a perfect scenario, you've accomplished everything that you wanted to accomplish. What does that look like? Hmm. I think, fuck, that's a hard one, bro. That's really a hard one. And, and and I'll be real with you guys. Like, my dad has cancer, and so we're dealing with, like, this whole cancer thing. 
And so at times I sit down and I'm like, okay, I do NFTs and I do all this shit. But then I look at my life with like my family and like health issues and things like that. And I'm like, that, that is, the, I'm already good. I, I'm already, I, if I, if I would be lying to you if I told you it's the Lamborghini and the Tesla. I already got the Tesla and I would give it away in two seconds from my dad's house. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to understand that I don't need to go anywhere and more of like, I'm already here. My destination is here with you on this podcast. And that's really it. That's all. That's where. That's the only place I can go because that's the only place that matters in this current time frame. And so I think for me, if I can understand that, I think I already have the success and what I want. Like I'm good. Like I already even and even if I lose all my money, even if my NFTs go to zero, it, at the grand scheme of things, it doesn't. It's not. It's doesn't not. Matter. Kind of, it doesn't matter. No. Like. Like it's the connections, it's the people, it's the memories. Like, like, bro, I got it was super dope. Like when I was meeting you, like I remember that clearly. Like it was yesterday. And to me, I'm like, I think like I try to think about it. Like when I die, I'm gonna remember shit like that. I'm gonna like, oh, remember I met him. I remember my dad had cancer. I remember I shipped out my boys. Like I'm remembering experiences and moments, not triumphs. Obviously, you're gonna remember your triumphs and stuff, but I'm more like. I think we're really here to experience whatever we're set out to do. You know, whether it's me doing NFTs or somebody doing a podcast, it doesn't. I think a lot of us, you know, even in the in, even in the Wagme world, right? We all want to make a hundred thousand dollars. We all want to make two hundred thousand on the flip. But in reality, I feel like if you're able to accept where you're at now, whether you made a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand or ten thousand, and you're able to be okay with that and just learn to enjoy it while it's there, I think that's it. I think that's it. And don't get me wrong, like sometimes I have a hard time doing that. Like I can tell you that, but then I go back into my real life and I'm like, oh, fuck, I want to make all this money and I want to figure life out. But at the end of the day, it's not, I know that's not the answer. I know that's not the answer that's like the, I know that's not what my heart wants. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, dying, I'm not going to remember. Remember when you made 60K? Now I'm going to be with my mom. I'm going to be with my dad. I'm going to be enjoying my friends, whoever's there around me. Whatever moments and experiences I got to like share with people that listen to me, that's what I'm gonna take with me. And I think that's the key that I want. At, at least for me personally, that's what success looks like to me. Like if I could be honest with you. Yeah, that's, that's great, beautiful. Man. Something that we like um, to say is like you you never lose as long as you learn something, right? And so uh, you know, you know, my best relation that I can say kind of to that story is that for me, I was really stressed as I was going into this game. And it kind of seemed like the better I did, the higher my stress level ran. Because, I mean, if nothing else, it's like I have this portfolio that uh, we're all aware of the scams or whatever that can go on in, in the space that's just kind of hanging over my head. And to some degree, I'm not doing anything with it. I, I'm reinvesting it. And so uh, I actually, you know, I'm getting married. And so I made the decision that, like, I've got to do something to ensure that no matter what else happens, I've won in this space, right? And so, I, I mean, I was thinking about it from a fiscal perspective. Um, that, that's not, a, you know, considering all the friends that I made and that sort of thing. And so what I decided to do is like, hey, man, you know, I've got to pay uh, $10,000 for my half of the wedding. Let me just pull it out. And so now it's like that experience, one, I, I mean, I kind of got like a free half of wedding, um, you know, my half of wedding. Mm -hmm. But two, it's like now Web3 is going to facilitate this really beautiful, moment this really awesome experience that you know obviously i would i would remember my uh, wedding regardless but now i'll have just that that web three tie to it so it's yeah it's just yeah. a really awesome experience yeah. Yeah. Stress and all that sort of thing. yeah and don't get me wrong like i'm telling people that but like you know when my dad had cancer you know last month and we were in phoenix and i had to pay for a hotel for 30 days you bet i was fucking thinking nfts because i would have not been able to afford that on a chili salary yep so, you know, it's like, it, it. don't get me wrong, doesn't mean like, yeah, fuck money. Like, no, 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 no. I think a lot of people are like, and even a lot of people are very scared to talk about like things like that, where I'm like, dude, why? It's like the most normal thing in the world. And like, I know like, I don't know how to explain, like I know there's like people, money to people, like sometimes it's like a very sensitive topic. And I'm like, why? Because, you know, our parents and our upbringing and the way society tries to like pre-frame you and make you like, Think like no, you, you know this is bad for you. Don't fucking do that. Not like money's just a tool that can be used for resources that makes our life easier. That literally just that's really what it does. It just makes us more comfortable. That's really it. Like you get a better house, you got a nice AC, 
you can have a car you have a problem you can fix it like it's a tool but you're not using like i think the you know like how you were saying right? you're using it as a tool to like cool fucking paint half of my wedding and then you can enjoy that moment you know with your wife and you know that that i think you know is important to also you know talk about with people and stuff like that yeah absolutely i know hofstra wants to say something but i just got to make one more comment here i'm gonna pass it to you they say people who are rich and sad forgot what it's like to be poor and sad and so there you go hofstra you can talk you know say whatever. You know, it's you want. funny i was teaching a deca class at this high school today and i was telling them a little bit about my story which is pretty crazy you know and when I was 23, I sold a house. I made 60 grand and you, I might as well have thought it was a million. I went and blew all that money. The, the first thing I did with that money is I went and bought a, an $8,000 ice link watch. I was in Santa Fe and I had a, I had a tag Hoyer. I tipped my tag Hoyer watch to the bellman at the Hilton in Santa Fe. And you I just gave it to him. I said, I said, I said, Hey man, you need this more than me. He was a cool dude. I gave it to him immediately went and bought a $7,000 watch. I had four hotel rooms because I, I wanted to feel like I was rich. I wanted to know that feeling. And I blew all of my money. Now, looking back on it, I'm 39 now and I can laugh at it, but I don't regret it. You oh, know, no, bro. It's, it's money's just money, you know, and I've been able to make that and some. And for me, this is more of a game. It's a test. I want to see what I'm able to do. If other people are doing it, why can't I do it? Oh, yeah, you know no, what I mean? absolutely. I think that 100%. I'm like, bro, like, like, I think that's one of the biggest things that like, people don't realize that, like, every single human on this earth is, like, they're not really composed of anything that you're not, you know, you want to learn something, then take the time to sit down, Google it, YouTube it, go to school, save up money, somebody's going to do it. And the person, the person that's living the life that you want is really just doing what you should be doing. <laughs> they're just doing what you're not doing. That's all they're doing. Like what are they right. doing? They're just doing whatever you're not, whether it's in spaces, hopping on a podcast, going to meetings, you know, there it's that there's no there's no really border. The only border is the one that we create in our minds. And even like for me, like I'm Mexican, dude. Like I, I understand that I might get fucking uh, criticized because I'm Mexican. Like I, I tell people like like I know what the real world is, but it doesn't stop me. I was fucking used to live in a trailer for twenty one years of my life. But I never thought that I would stay there. I'm like, okay, this is my current living situation, but it's not my forever. And so for me, I was always very like optimistic of like, well, I mean, I'm here now, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be here forever. And you know, I think that's really what allowed me to really break through is like having that consistent, like, I believe in myself and I don't care how or what the fuck I do. It's just like that that belief. Like, bro, you wanna know how much I fucking believe in myself? I have a tattoo like this one right here. It says, I always knew in Arabic. And so I put it on the left side of my heart. And so for me, I was like, all right, you believe in yourself so much, go get it tatted. And so get it, get it. people listening to this, don't go get tattooed and do what I do. But it was like, for me, like a prove it then, you know, prove that you do. And so that's why to me, I'm like, mother, you got to tattoo, you got to figure this out. You got to figure this life out. You got a tattoo. There's no choice. There's no way back. You told the Tupac until I got that thug life tatted on my chest. <laughs> yeah, and so I did that shit, and I'm not saying I made it now, but I knew that I would get here. I got this shit when I was broke, dead broke, and I was like, all right, now we got to go follow through with what we said, and I think that's it, you know, for a lot of people, I really think it's just, uh, you know, I had a friend that was super successful, and I remember I, I was talking to him, and I asked him, like, if it was like, what, how can I get like you? As I told him, I was like, how, how do I do what you do? And he said, it's just a choice. He's like, make a decision. <laughs> That's it. And then he left. And he didn't tell me anything else. He's like, just make the choice. Nice. So, Perfect. That's like, great. <laughs> Can't say it any better than that. And yeah, man, it's so true. You know, now you've got really big things coming up, um, especially with your project. And I, I was scrolling through your tweets. I'm going to ask you to drop a little here. I don't know how much you can, you know, give us here, but we're going to have a Web3 DJ exclusive. So I was reading and you said that you guys are coming up with two subscription models for your project. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what exactly that is? That's something that I haven't heard of in the space before. Um, you know, what are the benefits? What is it? What can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, so we're we're a skateboard brand. So my project is a skateboard brand. Uh, if you follow like skateboarding and stuff, you know about the skateboard mag, street league, and um, the thrasher. So like thrasher, of course, yeah. Yeah. So I, like, even if you're not a skater, everybody knows about thrasher now, right? Yeah. So like thrasher is like the number one skate mag, right? Um, so what we're doing is we're creating a magazine, and the magazine is called Alpha Mag. And so what the Alpha Mag has is pretty much um, this is the part of the reason why I'm going out to LA. And so pretty and actually now that we're on the topic, I want to include you guys. So pretty much it's an online digital magazine for my holders. So if people that own my NFT, they get pretty much monthly access to this digital magazine that gives them crypto content, alpha, uh, whatever the fuck I'm doing with my brand, like the skateboarding. It's gonna look like a skate mag. It's literally gonna have like, oh look, cannibal skater fucking kick clipping off a 10-story building. And then the next picture, it's a picture of you guys doing the podcast and it's talking about your stuff. And so it's gonna have like a lot of community, like whatever the world of NFT is going on, but as well as um alpha content and we just partnered up with uh, a alpha project mm -hmm. and so all the alpha is going to get funded by them i mean provided by them and so pretty much what, what alpha project? The, uh, it's called alpha access i think right now they only have 333 nfts on their on their collection they're like at point one um but the owner is um shmoon shmoney shmoney he owns uh one of the names <laughs> i don't know how to say his name <laughs> but pretty much like so what we're doing is imagine just by holding an nft you can every month like hey look at this is what people pay thousands of dollars of alpha for and you already you already have it you just just hold it you, every month every month it's gonna just gonna it's gonna give you whatever we can give you as far as like alpha and you know like i said the other day you know one guy in my discord off one of my calls you know he bought in obviously this is not financial advice you know I'm not saying to do this but you know, he was in one of our alpha groups and he made eight thousand dollars off a six hundred dollar play. This motherfucker for being in our Discord made four months salary minimum wage in two days. And so it. that it's like for me, it's like how can we provide value to the community? And so um, you know, talking about like uh, there's one guy, he made two K, that guy right there. Yeah, right. that guy made I love crazy. seeing that, man. I love seeing people have a come up. I love that. Yeah, and I know what that feels like. Community. Bro, that's exciting when you know when the community's like oh shit the community's winning too and so I think, like, you know, that's big for me like i don't just talk about like my project to my community like i just chill on my stuff i'm like oh no go buy my stuff but for me it's like i want everybody involved with me to make you know win look at that guy big joe 26 about two of them one for Shout out big joe. that guy's a believer you know he's telling everybody everybody in his life and they're looking at him the same way they looked at you at Chili's. Yeah, bro. And so that 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 magazine, so what we're doing with the magazine is it's going to be completely free to our holders. So if you own the magazine, uh, you get it for free. It's every month. And then if you don't own the magazine, this is where the subscription model comes in. If you okay. don't own the magazine and you want to be a part of it, you want to look at the alpha and stuff like that, you just pay a monthly subscription fee, just like a regular magazine. So... The cool thing is that you know how the Web3 space is very expensive? You know, it's like, you know, 100. I mean, you buy NFTs on Wait, your computer. Wait, are you dropping this on ETH? Is it on huh? ETH? On ETH? Ethereum? No, we're not. It's not. It's you dropping it on credit card. You just got to pay your credit card and you can, or, you know, go see the magazine. But if you hold if you hold the project, it's, 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 it's good for you. But what we're doing with this uh, magazine is imagine paying $14 for some fucking top alpha. <laughs> I can convince a million people to go fucking pay me $14 for that shit. And so now, you know, make a little bit of math, calculate $14 times 5,000 people. That, you, the, the, so you can see what we're doing. So you guys can really right. see what the fuck is going on. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Wow, 70G. How much 70, is it? 70,000? 70,000? 70,000 for what, 14 bucks for like 5K people? Yep. Just in my circle, we have, have a 5 million worth of people. And so now imagine like for us, right? We let's say we drop the magazine first month, we get five thousand subscribers to it. Seventy thousand dollars. That means that the project is gonna have a monthly residual income of seventy K to fund events, to fund merch, to fund IRL stores, to fund contests, to fund tokens, like whatever the fuck we want to do with our business, it will be funded not only by the community, 
but also people outside that are not in the Web3 space. And so that's building, we're building a subscription model for our brand cannibals, and that's only going to further expand what we do, how we market, the people we connect with, um, you know, just things like that. We're really trying to innovate in the space with, you know, I don't even think nobody's doing that. There's actually nobody yeah. in the entire space that's doing that at least. Yeah, and I was trying yeah. to pull it up because I, I think you tweeted kind of like a teaser of it or something. Um, yeah, I can't, I have a, it looks sweet. And it, it's funny you'd say Thrasher because that's exactly, you know, what I was thinking of whenever uh, I saw the preview. Yeah, and so, um, you know, we're launching that. Uh, and then we're going to, again, we're going to go out to LA. We're going to film like commercials, skate stuff. It's just cool. It's cool. I think it's great for the community. Oh, and then we also have a, we're also building a, well, right, John Kelly, he's the one I'm going to meet down in L.A. Yeah, they That's call right. him the uh, NFL skateboarder, right? Yep, and then check it out. He's rocking a cannibal on his profile picture. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so he's one of our cannibal members. We're going to go meet him down. Well, in tell LA. me how that story went, dude. Like, I mean, that's that's kind of what's cool about this space is you might be in a Twitter space with this guy or in a Discord, and somehow you connect it. How did you guys connect? Um, Really, I think. John, I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think John reached out to me. And the crazy part is, like, we also have a uh, I have Andrew Schofield, the guy from uh, Orlando Magic. Uh, okay. He's a point guard. I'm not sure, uh, but he plays for Orlando Magic, and he also owns a Cannibal, and he has it as a profile picture too. And I think he reached out to me too. And uh, what's cool is like, I think in the Web three space, like, if you own a mutant eight, bro, you're a celebrity. You know, you're yeah. like you're like. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'd rather talk to a mutant, a fucking board ape guy, than a fucking Lindsay Lohan. Like, oh, fuck it. like you know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right, really, right. For real, like if I could talk to a crypto punk, I'm like, oh, dude, fuck yeah, I got a million questions. So they're yeah. like the new celebrities of the new internet. Well, you know what I mean? And so I think that's why even celebrities are buying the big projects because they know that, bro, you you become recognized. Like, if, bro, if you. If you own a board ape, you can drop any project nine times out of ten it'll sell out. Why? Because you own a board ape. Do you have any business background? Who knows? You could have bought luckily on April for seven hundred bucks, but guess what? You own a board ape and it's gonna it doesn't matter what you post because you're a board ape. That's the brand that they've built. That's what's you know created. And it's funny because now you have this little effect to where you know celebrities that like Showfield and them, they were interested in the space. And so they're like, oh, this kid is doing it. Why don't we talk to him? And so then I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, I, I do it. I have another guy named Sam Sam Billings. Um, he does cricket. Uh, he's a professional cricket player. We have him. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so we have like so an international players. appeal, not just in the U.S. Mm -hmm, you yeah, have people overseas? That's yeah, cool. dude, I actually, dude, I would love to sponsor someone in the UFC. Like, we have, so there's Rosalie. And so that's what that's what I like about like my approach. I'm like, I want my brand to look like the like a Nitro Circus. That's what I want people to think. Like, I want to sponsor. If I can sponsor an MMA fighter, let's do it. If I can sponsor a pro boxer, let's do it. If I hey, well, I'm in Albuquerque. You know, dude, it's that's like our professional sport here is fighters. We have, so, we, we, have a, we have a couple from Yuma actually. Some from Yuma, Arizona, and we have yeah, like, you got two Kings, Kings MMA. Bro, did you Kane's see the? I'm sure you know with the news that fucking what Kane did. No. Uh, Kane, oh, Kane Velasquez, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, he's, from, he's, he's a G, he's bro. Ram honestly. Ram. Yeah, he's right yeah, from where from, and he, you know, unfortunately that shit happened to him. But yeah, that's right up our alley. That's our, that's our people right there. Yeah. Still, um, I, hey, man, I, I believe all that stuff's gonna happen because what I've seen from you, you know, people when they drop programs. This is what they do. They put a roadmap and then they say, I'm going to do that. Fuck that. You didn't even drop a roadmap. You just started doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I you just started creating now. and every day chipping away, man. And like you were doing a roadmap before you even realized what a roadmap was. You know, you were, you just threw the process of getting there. So just in, in what I've seen in a short period of time from you, I mean, I can only imagine two, three, four, five years from now, you know, what that's going to look like. And you know, action creates action. And man, that's the one thing I can say about you since I've met you is you're genuine, you're straight up, you're no bullshit, and you and you walk the walk. And you can tell a difference between, you know, those fake people out there and people that are really doing it. And so, man, I, I, 
I, I 100% believe you'll do it. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Honestly, like saying stuff like that really, I mean, even motivates me to be honest. Because sometimes, like, I think we can, even for me, like, I sometimes I feel like a phony. I'm like, oh shit, like, you know, you're really out here. You're fucking out here. And sure. it, 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 sometimes it's hard. And I got to tell people, like, and I think that's why, like, for me, like, I'm very vulnerable and I share with people. Like, if I'm struggling or if I'm doing something, like, hey, look, this is what's going on. And this is the reality. This is real life. This is real life. That's why, like, for me, like, dude, I've cried a bunch of times on my stream because I get fucking emotional and I'm, like, super sensitive. But I tell people, like, I'm like, dude, this is real life. Like, people that, you know, a lot of times, like, we put a facade. Even, like, me, like, I used to do it all the time. Like, on my Instagram, I used to only put the highlights, all the highlights and all the good shit. And I only want people to think I'm perfect. And it really, like, doing a bunch of TikToks kind of took that away from me where I was like, I just, just do it. Just do it. And so now, like, I don't even give a fuck. If you look at my TikToks, a lot of times I'll just put the camera to my face. And I'm like, hey, guys, blah, 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 blah. all right, bye. And I just put my phone away, keep going. And, like, I like I just now it's more of, like, how you're saying it's just just action. It's just action. You know, I think it's yeah. just constant, constant action. And people grav- gravitate naturally towards, you know, things that they perceive to be genuine, right? In a world full of phonies, if you can really find someone who's genuine, that, that's a gem and something that people will hold on to. Um, those boards, though, you've shown them a couple of times. I've been wanting to bring it up. They're sweet. I'm sure people are, you know, talking about them. Anybody who's seen them wants to get their hands on one. What is that process like? If somebody wants to skate Cannibal, how do they get their hands on the board? Uh, I think I'm sold out right now. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, there's a, so you can, for one, you gotta, so you gotta own my NFT so you can go mint a cannibal. So it's a cannibal, I think cannibalv2.com is my mint site, but pretty much how it's, it, the merch is exclusive for the community. So that is exclusive for, yep, yeah, right there. Um, so my merch is exclusive to, for my community. Cause obviously they gotta have, you know, the, what am I making, who am I making it for? And so it's exclusive to them. And so you gotta own a crypto cannibal v2 but then again it depends because the merch is uh the boards are very expensive sure and they're expensive to make and so for me like i wanna i always want to make sure to deliver like good quality stuff and so like these things are fucking like, like it's a real like good durable like i spent a couple grand on these things and so pretty much just being in the you got to be in the discord because that's where i drop like all my links and stuff like that uh, but pretty much, you know, being in the Discord, owning my NFT, and then I have, like, special links for my holders where I'm like, hey, guys, I'm dropping, you know, I'm going down to L.A. because I got to film all this new merch I bought, you know, like my shirt and stuff like that. So pretty much being a holder, and then whenever I drop the link down in the in my community Discord. Nice, man. Yeah, well, uh, as soon as I get off this, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy some merch. I'm going to get, get on the cannibal tip. For sure. Um, no, it's inspiring, man. I, I love your story. I think it's I think it's really cool. And I think a lot of people would connect with it, especially people that, you know, are, are trying to figure out what, what they want to do in life. You know, just hearing what you've been able to do. And, and what, you're like 27? 26, yeah. 26, man. That's incredible. No, that's awesome, man. I, I didn't start figuring things out until I was like 30. I just fucked up my whole 20s. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I think I'm old. You know, it's funny because like, you say that and I'm like, shit like sometimes like I, I i get in my head and and it's cool dude and you know what's the cool part i i i know for a fact we're all the same i know for a fucking fact because i had my friend as a buddy of mine um actually well not a buddy of mine but you know the guy the, the i keep bringing back the smiles guy he he, he Ali, did, right uh Wahid. so Wahid. he did like uh two million i think on his it's, i think it's past more than two million now but he did a couple mil on his project i remember i was in a space and I was just listening to him. And I asked him like for advice and I was talking to him and stuff like that. And he was talking about like when he was doing it, like and people were dropping his floor, how he was stressing out. He had like, you know, thoughts about it. And like, I was like, oh, this guy like fucking, you would think like, oh, you made millions. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you got, you got to have the ultimate life and shit like that. And you know, he's just regular kid, just like me, stresses out, fucking panics like you know gets in his head and i'm like oh shit it's just the same thing different levels hey can you see the chat i think someone in here asked he said i'm i'm a 3d art 3d artist maybe you're interested in working on some nft projects is that adams yeah i can see it and then another one do you see chat i don't know can you see the chat on that 
Oh, oh yeah, I see it. I think you responded in the private chat. Nice. It's on Twitch. It says it's from oh, Twitch. Oh, it's on Twitch. Twitch. It's on Twitch. Oh, shit, we're live on YouTube, too. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube, Twitch. Hey, pretty soon we're going to figure out how to live stream 20 at a time, yeah, man. It's called yeah. Optimization. Automate. He said, yeah. I'm, okay, he said, don't know where he looks. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to pull up your socials right now, Alan, so he can uh, check them all up. Check them all out. I guess I don't need to type that in the chat. Obviously, you're listening to me. So let me go ahead and pull up your socials. Uh, hey, Alan, I want to um, yeah, I want to hear about um, NFT culture. We were talking a little bit about this, but I've got my opinions. But I want to hear what you think about NFT culture. Because, again, this has only really been a thing for about a year. And it kind of mixes a lot of things. But, but where's your head at on that? Um, what do you mean in the NFT culture in what sense? Just culture, like like what it means to you or, or how, cause like, I'll just give you an example. I think of NFTs two ways. They're either like little startups, remote startups where these people come together or they're like bands, right? So it's like, Oh, you're a, you're a guitarist. Cool. Hey, you're a, a drummer. Okay. You know how to do uh you know, web design, boom, boom, boom. And then you start a, a, a band, right? And then that band gets big. And then Sometimes they start like other little bands, you know, and they have their little spinoffs and you have these little genres. Like you were talking about, you have skateboard genre, you've got um, music, you've got anime, you've got sports now, even on Solana, there's all kinds of like gaming stuff coming out. But um, yeah, I just want to hear like, as far as your take on it, because I think, I think you've got a good, good eye for this, but like, I just, what's your take on the culture of NFTs? I think like, I, I think most definitely, like, you're definitely right on the startup part of it, right? <laughs> it's funny when people tell me, like, oh, you're buying you're buying a fucking monkey picture. I'm like, no, you're buying a fucking part of a <laughs> No, company. you're missing the point, you're right? Buying, you're investing. You're buying a whole fucking organization, and if that shit does well, guess who else is going to do well? You. Right. Uh, it's like, it's literally like you're just buying, it, you're literally kind of like just buying the stock version with a picture. The picture is your stock. That's pretty I, you know, it's it's kind of like that, though, because yeah. you don't yeah. technically have ownership, but you're betting on the value going up. Right. Yeah. But but I do like the example because that's how I used to think of it. But the cool thing is, like in community, let's say this guy's in your discord and he just starts coming along. He's like, hey, man, can I sweep the floors? And all of a sudden he's just showing up all the time. You're like, yeah, dude, hey, just pick up a broom, start helping. And all of a sudden that's your community manager and he's got a job. And then now he's getting some free shit. You don't even have to have money. You just get in the discord. You just start you just start working. All of a sudden, now you got you know some merch. You got a couple NFTs. You know you get a name in there, and then you start dropping your your drawings, or you're like, hey man, I know how to play an instrument, and people are like, oh yeah, let me see what you got, and you put it in there, and it's like this this organic, natural way of creating a business. But it's a it's a business that's for the most part remote, Dude, and it's international, definitely. and it it can happen anywhere, and. To me, that's the most fascinating thing. I, you know, that's what I do. I, I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. The business that I own, I've, I've had it for nine years. I've grown it to, you know, just under 15 million in revenue. I've got 120 employees. That's my third business. And um, I just have a genuine interest in business. So when I see the NFT space, I think where the space is going, it's going to be, if you're not watching what's happening right now, you're going to be behind five years from now because all the big brands, you got Adidas, you got Puma, you got Gucci, you got, you know, Nike just bought Artifact for a billion dollars. Why would Nike buy Artifact for a billion dollars? Because they know they have to get ahead of their co competition. And if you don't start now and they scale and they got the money to scale, bro, you're not going to catch them. You're going to have a competitive advantage just by being fast in the space. And if you want to be like the next way that social media managers in businesses, do you remember, uh, you, you probably don't, but when there used to be the spend on social media, it used to be about 10% spend 10 years ago. Most businesses were spending 10% of their advertising budget on social media. And people were like, I'm not going to pay for Facebook. I'm not going to pay for Instagram. Why would I do that? Right now it's flipped. It's 90, 10, 90% is spent on social media. Web three is going to be the new 90%. Right now it's like 5%. But discords, when you go and you go shop for something and you have a question, they're going to send you to discord. You're going to go, hey, I got a problem with my thing. Boom. The speed that someone answers, it's going to be right there. You know, the NFT part, like that's going to give you the utility to do all this stuff. And so I think 
it's now being created. This didn't happen a year ago. This is all organic and you've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. We've kind of come along on this thing, but um, that that's kind of what I see on the, how things are going in the future. And I think you're just doing it. So you're you, like, there's two ways to start a business, right? You can go write a business plan. You can go to the bank and get some money or you can just start doing shit. You can mm -hmm. figure it out. There's a, what yeah. is that saying that you can have a good plan with no execution. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. It's like a, a shitty plan. Uh, was it a shitty plan executed is way better than the fucking great idea not done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sure. so for me, yeah. you know, I 100% I you know, believe in what you're saying right now. Even like, I was actually thinking of that because I was like, what happens when the rest of the world comes in? Who do they <laughs> talk to? Right? Who do they talk to? And they're like, well, motherfucker, they talk to you because you've been- They're going to need to know someone like you. Like, hey, tell me how to do this. I want to get in the space. And you go, all right, it's 20000 a month. Bro, oh my fucking God. Bro, the Web3 is probably the most lucrative- place in the universe it is like I, sometimes i'm like I, i'm weirded out of how easy it is i'm like is this like a fucking is this real yeah like, is, like if you really take the time to understand the space and do a little bit of research you're it, it's not hard and yeah. i think it's just people are lazy because and I'm, I'm fucking lazy too that's the thing like i'll say people are lazy but i'm lazy too trust me i fucking if i can wake up late i'll wake up late if i can go to sleep late i'll go to sleep late i'm not fucking i'm that my friend had a on her tweet. Her name is Productive Procrastinator. I was like, that's how that's I. That's awesome. Myself. I'm like, bro, I'm the same way. Um, but yeah, no, it's crazy because like I was like I was thinking of that too. I was like, who 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 are the people gonna come to when it's time for businesses to build? Like, well, people like me, like you guys that are in the space that like, and you don't. And it's crazy because like, the Web three space is like. They'll tell you like, oh, do this and it's 10 grand. All right, cool. Here you go. Like, well, you, know, like, like, okay. like you, know, you, you should talk about that. Like the web three world has fucked up the way I look at money. Oh like, yeah. Bro, you know, I'm like, bro, I'll, I'll buy like a hundred bucks, bro. Yeah. And then like, oh, that's fucking a hundred bucks. Hell yeah. Fucking, I had gas. I was 80 bucks the other day. This is cool. Like, this is cheap. And yep. I'm like, no, it's not cheap. It's like you're, you're, the way the money works on the Web3 space in real life is way different. Hey, are you messing around on any other blockchains? Are you on no. Solana or Tezos or? Oh, uh, actually, you guys want to see a new project I'm working on? If yeah, you can you share Twitter, your screen? Yeah, go on Twitter and look up Solana, Solana Slum Dogs. It's uh, a new collection uh, I'm dropping. So actually, that's I'm probably gonna do better off on Solana actually because most of the people that are on TikTok first onboard get onboarded through Solana and other not really through Ethereum because Ethereum is so expensive but a lot of the world wants to get on it so I probably it's, might even do better on Solana because yeah of that. yeah so that's actually one of the questions so Mitt Solo asked what are your opinions on of projects that offer staking and their futures and are, are you staking anything? Are you in any projects where you're doing staking or any sort of like DeFi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing uh, right now. I'm staking uh, Lithi AI. I don't know if uh, I don't know if you know about Lithi AI, but I'm staking that what one. What is it called? Lithi AI. No, bro, that is the craziest. I would, no one talks about it. Nobody talks about it. And I'm like, bro, this has got to be the craziest fucking NFT in the universe. What is it paying you percent? Huh? What's it paying you percent? Uh, I honestly don't even know. I just have the little, they're like these little AI pods. I have to go look at them, but pretty much you stake their NFT and it gives you uh, tokens. I know their tokens went up like 31 cents over the last couple of weeks. So I might have a bag in there. I haven't even checked. I've That's had cool, man. Hey, so mid so well, he said, ah, you saw it. I've uh, been following Alan for so long, man. That's dope. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. So, uh, that's uh, Mitt Sowo, S-O-W-O. Yeah, I got him right here. I can see him in the comments right here. Yeah. Yeah, that so so um, we're in this other group called Back Alley, and a lot of these guys, like I said, they spun off of another group. We all met in Crypto Cannabis Club, and they started, like, back then, it was like that was the thing you were in, and that was your profile picture. But then people started getting into, like, Gutter Cat, right? And it's almost like they, they kind of grew up a little bit. I don't know if that's the right word, but your taste changes just like music. You get into NFTs and then all of a sudden you, you get, you find something else like staking and you're like, oh shit. And then the gaming aspect of it, 
and you learn a little bit more and you learn a little bit more and then you jump on another blockchain and that blockchain doesn't charge you $50 every time you make a transaction. Yeah. And you start seeing the possibilities and you're going, wow, like I got to learn this. And, and it sparks a different hunger to try to understand these other blockchains and understand the technology. See, I got it in backwards. I got into crypto and I had like 20 different cryptocurrencies. And then I was listening to these podcasts and then they started talking about NFTs. Well, I was already collecting MMA trading cards. I was collecting sneakers. I was collecting art and I was kind of trying to sell it. So all that stuff applied in the NFT space. And so it was easy to, to understand the concepts of, of how these things uh, moved. But um, on these other blockchains, they're innovating stuff that you just can't do on Ethereum right now. And it's really cool to see these different uh, companies getting in and and kind of up in the game and trying new things. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's why I was asking if you're on any other blockchains. Oh shit! Oh, that's the one I Whoa. gave you. Hell yeah, dude! That's a that's a one of one custom art piece of Izzy. Uh, Adesanya, Israel Adesanya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're probably like, why is this guy giving me an MMA card? I'm like, I don't know. I got a shitload of them. Ding! Israel yeah, Adesanya. Rob gave it to me. Dude, hey, you know what? Uh, this is actually my favorite. I think I told you. Man. I don't know if that's why you gave it to me. Yeah. I was like, this is my favorite UFC fighter, dude. Bro, you know what's funny? So I went to the Beeple um, Gary V 137 premiere where they shot this documentary about Beeple selling his art for $68 million on Sotheby's. And so AJ Vanderchuk was there, which is his brother. And he was talking to people and I went up, they probably thought I was weird, right? I had a whole bag and I had all these cards in there. And I said, hey man, who's your favorite fighter? Cause I know these guys are in MMA. And then he said that they represented Tony Ferguson. So I pulled out my card, I had autographed Tony Ferguson. Said, Here you go. I said, what is your brother like? He said another guy and I said, okay, give it to him. And he's probably like, yeah, whatever, dude. And so I hit him up every time and you know, hey, did you got that card and you wanna play some DraftKings? Like, you know? Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a good one too to that's have. Fucking dope. I bet you he remembers you though. You know well, that's, I mean? the, that's the that's the trick because I'm like that motherfucker's gonna remember somebody that comes up to him and gives him a you know something. Yeah, cool. no, that's it, bro. You understand? That's that's a great, even like a great um, way to bring value to somebody. I oh, think exactly. like, a lot of people like don't realize that too, right? Like I have people that reach out to me and they're like, "Hey, you know, we need help on this promo stuff," and like I'm like, "Bro, you're like, if you go up to other people and you tell them like you want." them to show your stuff you're probably going to get shut down a lot right like, i'm nice and i'm going to be nice about it and be like you know i won't be normal but a lot of times like people don't really like you have to bring value to somebody before you can ask anything and so even for me like with my stuff a lot of times i like i try to sound like hey look, this is what we do and if you want to be a part of it you know you're more than welcome to right you know i don't i don't i i, I think even like as a business standpoint like you want to come into a conversation to add to it not to take away right and I think a lot of businesses in the entire world, like if they just heard that, that would change, that would probably increase their profits by like 30% or 40%. Like hey. instead of trying to fucking take, figure out what you can give. And then from that, you're going to get people that come in through that. For sure. Um, this is my shameless Walmart plug here. I know some people hate Walmart, but like it, you, you cannot argue. It's empirical that like they're one of the best companies in the world, right? That That's a fact. And at the core of their business, their value is to give back, share profit, right? To share with, the, with their workers. And it's like the people, if you ever go to like Walmart headquarters, man, I'm telling you, like it, 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 it's almost anonymous with like a religion up there. Work for Walmart, love Walmart. And it's like in lieu of that, they're willing to put forth an extra effort that, you know, the people at Target probably aren't doing. You know, the people at Kmart certainly weren't doing exist anymore, right? CVS is shutting down a ton of stores. I would almost guarantee that that's not in their business model either. And so, like, you, you nailed it, man. And that goes through um, proven corporate strategy as well, right? I, I mentioned that this is like a Walmart thing, but this isn't. Doug McMillan, the current CEO of Walmart, this isn't like an idea that he came up with. This is Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, instilled this value at their core. And that's why, you know, they're around however many years from their um, birth, and that's to be around however many years from now. Yeah, I absolutely, you know, 100% on that. And, you know, even if, you know, projects did that, they would, they would blow up. I'm like, 
you literally like I see a project that has like you know a roadmap, and I'm like, oh, that's good. If if that project just literally just follows through with what they said they were gonna do, nine times out of ten they're gonna go up. Right? Well, here's, go here's a, yeah. So here's how I look at the NFT space, right? When I said that they're all mini startups, well, if you're just looking at the odds of business, fifty percent of them fail within the first two years. That's a fact. Eighty percent fail within the first five years. So if you just think of it in terms of just what the what the stats are on business, that's why Gary Gary V says 90% of them aren't going to be here. I believe that 100%. Because what happens is, think if you just came up on 3 million, you talk about the smiles first guy, okay? It's going to come down to who can execute, who, who can actually scale and be smart and hire the right people to build a brand. That's why when I see you on a smaller budget, and that might even be more beneficial down the road, because if you're young and you come in, like I said, you know, I, I got 60,000, I blew all of it. In my head at the time, I thought it was a great idea, right? And these guys, if you've never had money before, and all of a sudden you get two, $3 million tomorrow, and it was that easy, you're going to have a different uh, perspective on it. It's not going to feel like you grinded and you suffered and you sacrificed and you know the value of money and lived in a trailer your life. You know what I mean? Like, that is a little bit different experience than someone that just comes up on it and buys a Lambo and all of a sudden they think they're cool shit, you know, and all they did is hit the timing right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and and even like, you know, even for me, like it, it is hard sometimes because like, you know, this is like for me being like, I gonna I live at home with my parents and stuff like that. So like even coming up with a thousand dollars a day, I was like, like, oh shit, like this is fucking, this is crazy. And I think you just, you know, you adjust and it depends, you know, it depends on where you come from. And, you know, I think a lot of times too, like money just really exposes people. It doesn't change. It just shows who you really are. You just got money now. <laughs> it's like, it's you, but it's, it's more glorified or exemplified version of who you are really, because if you're a dickhead, when you're pro broke, you're going to be a dickhead when you're rich. It doesn't really matter. If you're a nice dude, you're going to be nice when you're broke. You're going to be nice when you're rich. If you're cool to hang out with when you're broke, you're going to be cool to hang out with when you're rich. You know what I mean? Like it's the same, it, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. So we're coming up on like uh, an hour and 15 minutes. I just wanted to, how, how can, we're going to repost this on uh, YouTube. We're going to cut it up, make it look a little more professional, but it was cool, man. It was really good hearing about you. And I, I love seeing what all the stuff that you're doing, but where, where can people find you? Um, yeah. So um, my, my social medias are all Alan, the NFT guy. So it's A-L-A-N, the NFT guy. Well, for the most part, um, my uh, TikTok is Alan, the NFT guy, dot ETH. So you can find me there. I just post, you know, daily content about just Web3, what I do, flips, alpha, my project, what's going on in the Web3 space. I'll probably make content on this too. Definitely when you guys cut it up, let me know. That way I can repost it to like my audiences and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we'll throw some cool music on it. Hey, what, what's your favorite band? My favorite? Oh, shit. Favorite kind of music. Honestly, like I'm lame. I listen to lo-fi. That's my thing. Dude, I love lo-fi. That, you know, if you're working, lo-fi is like the That's beat. You're not listening to uh, lyrics. You're just getting in it. Yeah, I so, had no idea what lo-fi was until Web3, but every single Discord has the lo-fi channel in it. You know why? Lo-fi is set to a frequency that's supposed to like optimize your thinking patterns. Like the, the beats per minute on it has something to do with, I don't know, it just triggers your brain, you know. Yeah, yeah normally like I'll do that. Um, you know, I'll just listen to lo-fi. Uh, honestly, I'll put on like Alan Watts or Ram Dass and – Dude, lo-fi, lo-fi and Alan Watts go hand in hand, the perfect match made in heaven. To me, that's like my, I don't know, it's kind of like my therapy. I think about it because like I'm working and I'm just listening and I'm just, I'm just hanging out, which is the cool part. I'm just like, all right. It doesn't really feel like work. I think that's why maybe I'm able to do a lot of shit too. Cause like, I don't feel like, like this is kind of like considered work, right? Cause I got to make right. about this sure. I'm just fucking hanging out with you guys. I'm just shooting the shit. No, dude, that's, that's so dope. And hey, I just want to give a shout out. We have a couple of guys in here. It looks like they've been, or girls, I'm not sure. Exec FPS and uh, Nit Solo. Thank you so much for showing up. This is the first time we've done this uh, live in this fashion. And um, yeah, you got to start somewhere, you know, just, just get after it, man. And you inspired me to get into this and to start doing this stuff. So I really appreciate you too. Yeah, um, but I know we're closing. But I had a question I wanted to ask you, Alan, and you know, this right here might be a, a challenge to any of the watching. But something that you said, I think it might have been in your bio, is that you are an awful worm, a bookworm, and you have yet 
to meet someone who has logged more Audible hours as you. I don't. I, I mean, I don't uh, use audio books, so I don't know if you like have a way to instantly track that. It looks like you might be yeah. pulling it up. So as you're, I'm looking at your books in the back. Yeah. Yeah. My question to you is, um, one, you know, like, are you reading or listening to anything now? And then two, is there something that you have listened to or read? that screams like web three to you or a web three must read? Um, on the first part, um, no, I don't. So what I listen to is like uh, business books. So it's all business books. It's sure. all that type of, you know, uh, any mindset would do a book that you definitely have to read. If you haven't is uh, like one like David Goggins. Have you guys read that one? Um, oh, David Goggins. Yeah. That's on my list to read. Me, um, it hurt me. The audible version is crazy. Um, and I'll give you guys some super alpha. And so this is a challenge for you guys. If you guys get a chance, this will blow your fucking mind. Like this, this one is super crazy. Um, I'm sure you guys know Thinking Grow Rich, right? Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the mo- number one most iconic. It's dope. Yeah, I love that book. Have you guys read uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon no. Hill? I have not, no. Bro, I dude. Read either. No, bro, get ready to get your mind blown. Go. When you get a chance, I'd, I'd recommend you listen to the Audible. Don't listen to the – don't read it. Get on Audible. Download Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. This book was written in 1930, and it was – Oh, I know. It's still true. In 2011. Dang. Eight years hidden because it has – like the shit that it has inside of that book is like – Okay. You're, you're not coming out the same. You're not coming back the same person. Like, All right. When you listen to it, you're like, what the fuck is – It's a <laughs> great book. All right, um, but, I'm gonna challenge you back then, real quick. It, you may have read it. I know you've got a lot of hours on you. Um, so this is a book that I read in school, and I think it might do you wonders. Um, well, just just the position you're in, right? Okay. It, no, I haven't read that one. How to build habit forming products? You have read it already? No, no, no. I have. I have read the one on the right side, the power of habit, but not the not the one that you have right Yeah, there. you should check it out. How to build habit forming products because it's like at its core, you know, that's kind of what you're trying to do with your community, right? Hey, yeah. I like that, Alan, for your for your um, subscription model. Throwing just a list of books because I was actually thinking about doing the same thing on ours where it was just like a resource page for people that are getting in NFTs with, you know, just links to a bunch of stuff, but I think that's really important too. I I you know, I think oh, a lot of people would enjoy that. The- you just throw like your books. What do you listen to? Hell yeah. That's the reading level. I'm not master on that shit. Like I, I can't oh, wow. any, I can't go any further. I've already reached mastery on this shit. And how many and hours is that at like, mastery? Huh? How many hours is that at mastery? Does it say uh, like X plus or something? I don't know. It doesn't I don't know if it tells you. It tells you when you're trying to reach it, but it just means a lot. <laughs> and I've done I've read for let me see, total Hey, honestly thirty seven days. Say again? 27 days. Sheesh. I'll be honest with you. I think you're the first master reader I've ever met. Can't say I've ever met a master reader before. That shit, it it becomes a part of you. And, you know, when people tell you, like, what's your diet consist of, it's not just what you eat. It's what you eat, what you listen, what you read, what you fucking surround yourself, what you're fucking listening to as music, the, the, the blog post, the friends you're around, that's your diet. And that literally determines your entire fucking future. 100%. You heard it. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Alan oh, Reyes. Oh, oh, oh. Boop, 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 boop. Did you guys gotta please read Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill? Come back and be like, yo, what the fuck? That, that shit's crazy. It's good. Oh, follow up on see, the book right see, there. Here, like I'm the same way, but for documentaries. I guarantee you've never met anybody that's watched as many documentaries as I have. So you want some docs, man? I'll shoot you like just hit me up and Dude, for real. Uh, show me some interesting ones. I love documentaries. Oh, I got some, some shit on money that will blow your fucking mind. Like, I love the fucking um, what are those ones? The ones that like talk about like black holes in the universe and the oh, dude, don't. <laughs> I'll shoot I'm you a couple. Over the road. I'll shoot you a couple. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey man, this was really fun. Um, keep doing your thing and uh, appreciate you coming on. And um, is there anything else you want to say before we jam? No, man. I mean, if you guys want to check us out, you guys can go, you know, follow us on my social medias. You know, everybody's welcome in my Discord. You don't got to own my NFT to be in my Discord. And especially for a lot of people don't know, but when I do my uh, VIP calls, like in my Discord, uh, obviously not financial advice, but it, you don't have to own anything. You can literally go in the Discord, you go to roles and you get the VIP. 
and you can be in there with everybody else. We drop a lot of alpha. It's completely free. I don't charge anything. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, free resource for people to come in, hang out, meet other people in the space and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, appreciate it. All right. With that, we'll, we'll cut and uh, we'll do it again next time. Thanks, man. All right, boys. Yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us. And Alan, it was great to meet you, man. Joe, really oh, appreciated yeah. it. Keep in contact. Let me know when you guys read the book. I will.